We are back on the road to City Hall. As the Trump administration rolls out its new immigration policies, city officials are looking for ways to protect some New Yorkers. Queen City Councilman Rory Lanceman is calling on the NYPD to begin issuing summonses rather than make arrests for minor offenses. Those uh, arrests could make people vulnerable to deportation is the problem that he has identified. Councilman Lanceman is the chair of the council's committee on courts and legal services. His district includes parts of eastern Queens, including Jamaica, Fresh Meadows, and Hillcrest. Thank you for being here. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Good to be back. Uh, let's, let's focus on, on, on fair evasion, because this is you, you, you've educated me about something I didn't know. Uh, somebody jumps over the turnstile, uh, cop catches them. They can give them one, uh, they could give them either of two different paths. Uh, you know, you're still going to get summons, you're right. in trouble, uh, but one can lead to deportation and the other doesn't. Why is there a difference? Jumping a turnstile is both a um, criminal law misdemeanor in the New York State penal law. It is also a violation of the MTA's internal rules. If somebody is charged with a criminal law misdemeanor, they are arrested and go through the criminal process. And based on federal law, that is a crime that is potentially uh, a basis for deportation, even for legal immigrants. On the other hand, if somebody is given a civil, civil summons for violating the MTA's internal rules, they go to something called the Transit Adjudication Bureau in uh, Brooklyn, and they pay their fine or they contest it in the civil process and it's got nothing to do with the criminal justice system at, uh, at all. Most of the, almost all of the crimes that form the basis for someone uh, being deported, especially the low-level, nonviolent quality of life offenses like fair beating, um, are state and local offenses. Mm -hmm. And if the mayor is serious about protecting immigrants from deportation, he will act and direct the NYP to treat these, NYPD to treat these offenses as civil offenses. Okay, so now a couple of uh, a, a couple of things that go with that, right? The uh, the police say they need to be able to do this for a couple of different reasons. They say that it's um the, the quality of life <laughs> policing leads them to catch bad guys who have guns, drugs, open warrants for serious violent offenses and so forth. A person gets stopped for fair beating. The police officer checks their identification, makes sure that there's not a warrant out for their arrest, mm -hmm. conducts whatever search of their person they're legally entitled to conduct given the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it is that point when a decision has to be made whether a person is going to be charged criminally and go through the criminal justice system mm -hmm. or given a civil summons. So treating these offenses, low level, nonviolent, quality of life offenses, mm -hmm. as civil offenses don't in any way stop the police from making that initial stop, checking people's IDs um, and making sure that there's no outstanding warrant for their arrest. Well, but I mean, but the, the, the point was, you know, when we came out of the bad old days, and you remember the bad old days, when there was rampant fare evasion that actually sort of, you know, put a serious hit on the MTA <laughs> budget, um, that it was by stopping people, putting handcuffs on them. I, you remember the ad that used to be in the subway saying, you'll be more than just embarrassed if you keep fair beating. You'll be arrested. I, yeah? I'm confident uh, that people will be sufficiently embarrassed by being stopped for, by a police officer, forced to produce identification, searched if the situation warrants it, and then be sent off to a civil process as opposed to a criminal Process. In, the process. Civil, in the civil process, what if they, if they take the summons and tear it up and, and forget about it? What happens? Well, it's the same thing if I um, get a parking ticket or uh, I uh, get a, a red light uh, or, or a, um, a, a, a camera speeding ticket. Mm -hmm. If I ignore the summons, it doesn't turn me into a criminal. There would be a judgment entered against me for the amount of the ticket and then, and then some fine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I get a parking ticket. It doesn't make me, make me a criminal. Mm -hmm. I am deterred. From, from, from not paying my well, I mean, that's what meter. Point is that maybe you're not, right? I mean, if there's no real consequences, right? But, but, it, but it is a consequence. Mm. The question is, are the consequences calibrated to the, the conduct that people are engaging in? And more importantly, in this context, are the consequences calibrated to the context of being the fuel for Donald Trump's deportation machine? Mm. Nobody should be subject to deportation because they jump a turnstile. And yet, we are putting upwards of 30,000 people a year who uh, um, at, at risk of deportation. Mm. And, and uh, do you have any sympathy for the argument that, you know, was, that nobody should jump the turnstile, especially if you're here and undocumented? I don't have any sympathy for that argument because implicit in it is that someone who jumps a turnstile, turnstile should get punished beyond whatever sanction we've determined turnstile jumper should, should pay, mm -hmm. but should be deported from the country. 
I don't have any sympathy for that argument at all. Okay. Any, more, any more than I should get deported from the country because, you know, I didn't pay my, uh, my, 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 I didn't feed the meter well, with my no, car. The, the problems with summons court we've talked about before and we'll talk about again. Um, I was disturbed to see in one of your reports that uh, there are ICE agents that are waiting outside the summons court, uh, waiting to sort of, you know, basically oh, grab well, people. Absolutely. So the ICE agents are, are now going to the arraignment parts within the city and anybody who has to appear um, uh, for an arraignment, even for a misdemeanor, is now uh, being handed up to, uh, to ICE on a silver platter. Mm. And again, people who commit low-level, low nonviolent quality of life offenses should be held accountable, but we are um, uh, adding to that, to that accountability the possibility of being deported. And if, and if we care about stopping Trump and fighting Trump, uh, we've got to do something more than talk, because talk is cheap. All right, we are out of time, but are you running for mayor, Rory Lantzman? I see that, you, I see that you've collected, I, I, I saw dozens of uh, donations of 4950, which is right. the maximum amount if you're running for a citywide, an unspecified citywide right. office. Is right. that, what, what unspecified citywide office might you be running for? I, I don't uh, know what the landscape will look like in, in 2017. Um, I do know that there is a real interest in um, a progressive voice in, in city government that is independent for Mayor de Blasio, which I certainly have been. Let's see what the political landscape looks like in 2017. I mean, the reason we're even having this conversation is because of the spectacle last Friday of a sitting mayor sitting for four hours answering questions from a prosecutor um, because he put a city for sale sign up on, on, on City Hall. That's the real issue. Okay. We, uh, to be continued. Thanks a lot for coming by tonight. Thanks for having me. Okay. We're going to take a short break now. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a minute.